Folks, a very good morning wherever you're joining us from. It is the 28th day, if I'm correct, of August already for your information. Welcome to each and every one of you. I am joined this morning by my sometime co-host, <laughs> Tabitha Surabo. Tali is here, folks. Welcome, Tabby. How are you doing? How have you been keeping? Good morning, Shara Duncan. Good morning to your viewers. I've been doing quite fine. Um, I've been doing quite fine. I was battling an actual cold over the last couple of days, so I'm now getting out of that. But outside of that, I'm fine. How are you on your, and on what's happening on your end? Um, good, good, good at my end. We were fighting uh, Mike Demon this, this morning. <laughs> Mike and <laughs> audio spirit. <laughs> but we seem to have gained the upper hand. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Trying something new. Technology always, you know, does not always cooperate with us, but we're here. Oh, yes. And it's night, it's night starting a new week with you, Tabby, and all the other folks who are joining us. I see we have Dolly Anderson is here and Cheryl Pancham, Carol Rollins, Orwin Dunn. All the other folks joining us. A very good morning, folks. Yes, good morning to you guys. I can't see who's there, but good morning to everyone joining. It's a pleasure to really be with you this morning. I hope you guys had a good uh, weekend. I know some persons didn't have such a good weekend as we'll get into later in the program. Um, but for those of you here, I wish you the best this week um, and that you're successful in all that you have planned to do this week. Excellent. We got Leslie and Joseph. Let me call some of them who we can see. Orin Don Cook is here and Deborah Pearson. I see we got... Yolanda Thomas. Yolanda, how are you doing? Um, I see we got Bella Mona, Vesta Hardy, Raj Kumar is here as well. And we got um, a lot of other folks. Robin Narayan is joining us too. Um, guys, welcome. A very good morning to you. I'm going to let you guys know how much we raised last week in just a little bit as we got more folks on the live. Because we believe in transparency here. I'm going to let you guys know how much we raised last week. Uh, that sounds Our like drone. It, I Sound like you have a good number there, man, Sharon. You huh? you would have said. <laughs> I, look, when you start with zero, anything up from there is a good number. <laughs> when you start from you. zero, anything so what, from there. If you would have been as transparent if it remained at zero. <laughs> yeah, I tell them that too. You know. <laughs> I did tell I did tell our I did tell our uh, our listeners and viewers last week um that we were very close. We were mm, right there <laughs> awesome 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 nice right there good. yeah so we we're, we're gonna do that um and then i think sometime between today and tomorrow we're gonna make that purchase and by weekend we we're gonna be we, we can we can do the unboxing right here so you got to come, come back for lunch <laughs> <laughs> um, i'm excited for you i'm excited for you. i think any i'm excited any for us to the tools will be it will be you know it'll be good for the program that you're doing oh yes i'm i'm excited for i'm excited for us um, and so welcome, guys. Welcome. Uh, Ro I see Roger Norris is here. I think Roger's out in Brooklyn. Beatrice Selby is here, too. Beatrice, wrong, wrong the corner. Um, we got Debbie Collins, Yolanda Thomas, Yvonne Ramasar. Yvonne, how are you doing? Hope you guys have had a good weekend. As Tabby said, it wasn't such a good weekend for all of us. But we can talk a little bit about that as we as we move out further. Um, Dolly Sheena Hazel is here, too. Um, a lot of folks joining us. And guys, let me make sure that we are shared to all the right places as well. And we invite you guys to share the live too. You know, take a moment to do that. Uh, Tammy, I saw you sipping something earlier. And I don't know if you want to let us know, you know. No, I have my ginger. No, I'm, <laughs> I believe in ginger. <laughs> so huh? I have my ginger tea this morning. It's oh, you have some ginger, ginger tea? Cold. Yes, pure well, ginger Well, I tea. fell in love with ginger. Um, last week, I felt I was getting this urge. You know what you call it? Um, you get a craving. So like it's you and the drawing from. Congrats. I hope it's a, uh, I hope it's a boy. <laughs> Very funny. But no, the ginger works even when you're, if you're not well, it helps. Because it, it helps to, you know, clear all of everything that is happening in your throat and your nose and so on. And it, it also helps when you are well, to keep you uh -huh. well. So um, the more you drink it, the better. So good. I'm very happy I can help you go on the healthier side. Well, of I believe. I believe. Well, you, and and you know what? I wanted. I'm just why I'm why I'm not looking at y'all directly. I'm I'm trying to make sure that we are shared to all the places we're encouraging you guys to share to as well. Um, but this morning I wanted to start with ginger. I started with plain tea, plain tea bag, um, original. I think that's 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 what's written on the outside. Original. Um, but I realized that the ginger I thought was tea bag we bought yesterday 
Um, I wish somebody could help me. <laughs> what was it? Was it was um, it's, it's, I think I saw on the box outside. When I opened the box, I was looking for a tea bag, but I noticed it's like a powder. Yes. And then when I read it finer, I see Mark Juice Drink Mix. Oh, <laughs> oh no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't decide going. <laughs> But right they, they do everything. actually have the ginger, which is powder. That's the one I'm actually using. But it's not a mix. It's just uh -huh. not. It's not a drink mix. It's just the tea, the tea, um, the tea. But it's in a powdered form, and not. It's just not in a tea bag. I drink with all the people ginger last week, so we have to get some over the weekend. <laughs> but I'm seeing the box, and it marked hundred percent ginger juice drink mix. Well, oh. I just want some tea. I don't know if you could convert it. Yeah, I <laughs> you can try. Try to see how it goes. <laughs> I, I was not, I was not, 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 not a fan of ginger at all. So I don't know. I, I don't think I graduated the drink as yet. <laughs> I, <laughs> no, what you have to do is mix it. You mix the ginger <laughs> drink mix with something <laughs> else that you like. And so you have that little, that, that little kick from the ginger. And it, 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 it tastes, I think it tastes pretty good. It would taste really good. So try mixing it with something else that you like and see how it goes. Okay. Maybe. Maybe that way. <laughs> <laughs> Mix it with some of Naomi's banana. You know, Naomi was admiring this banana all week last week. But Tommy, oh. good to have you here. Let's 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 get into some of the things we are following this morning mm -hmm. at awesome. our end. Guys, we're thankful that all of you are here with, with us. We're gonna uh, shift our orientation a little bit um as we as we get moving. But some of the things we're covering, as we said, you know, it wasn't a good weekend for, for everybody. As a matter of fact, it was quite a weekend, especially in the in the in the five nine two. Why don't we start with some of the things that are happening internationally? And one of those things we're looking at is the tenure of the British, the UK's vice, uh, the UK's Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. And you know, Rishi started out very strong with a lot of goodwill. Um, and this morning, we learned that um, he has a cabinet resignation. Um, not that they didn't see it coming. As a matter of fact, uh, the, the, the woman had planned to resign since June and was getting a lot of pushback when she kind of changed her mind from that. Uh, but of course, any resignation is, is, um, is not a good yeah. is not a good one. Um, let me see let me see if this was a lot. This was, it was a member of parliament. Um, not a minister, and she is, um, we would say Nadine, but they say Nadine Doris. And in her resignation, Tabby and others, she delivered what Royce is calling a, um, a scathing attack on her conservative party leader, Rishi Suna. I just want to quote some of what she, she said here. She says that since you took office a year ago, this is the prime minister she's talking about, the country is run by a zombie parliament. That sounds familiar. Where nothing meaning, meaningful has happened, what exactly has been done or have you achieved? This is what Doris is firing off at Sunak. You hold the office of prime minister unelected without a single vote, not even from your own MPs. You have no mandate from the people and the government is adrift. You have squandered the goodwill of the nation. And for what? They have not responded as yet as a government. Tabby. Wow. This is familiar. Adrift. It is familiar, but it's interesting um, because this is somebody from our, from his own party. Yeah. And, which which uh, makes it even more stinging. Yes, and it it it's probably suggests once somebody writes that, that means they have other support. The support may not have come as yet, but her statement may not be um, isolated. And so there may be other persons in 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 his party that believe the same thing, but they have not yet come forward. And so it would be interesting to see where this goes, uh, because it would probably mean that somebody else will be vying for the leadership of the party pretty soon. And so she was just the first person to go in that direction. So we have to see whether it was it's an isolated um, a situation or whether you will see more in the coming days of persons uh, uh, making the same statement, a statement like that about his leadership. Uh, I ha what I what what I know is that the 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 british parliament and even the british politics is not like Guyana, and so it's not a they're not beholden to the leadership the way in which we are in these parts and so if persons feel like things are not going in the right direction there's there's ease it's easy for them to have a shake up and for um changes to occur um so let's see where it goes let's see where it goes yeah 
yep, yep. I saw, I see some folks asking if we are talking about Guyana and the PVP, you know, uh, Zambi well, Parliament. The, the, the difference meaningful. <laughs> government the difference is it wouldn't come from internally. It would not. It wouldn't come from. Um, it wouldn't come from the party itself. We're seeing it on the outside, but when somebody on the inside has the the you know the gall, so to speak, or the the, the strength to come out publicly and re not only say it but resign, um, in protest of how they view the the leadership, uh, running, then I I, I it's it, it, I think it's a stinging uh. It's evidence that something is not right in camp. It's evidence that something is not right. So yeah, it's basically what we hear from um, that particular individual is almost the same as what is happening in Guyana here. But the difference is that they they have ways in which they can make changes if it, it, it if it is required. We don't generally have that unless until we get to the next elections. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the the, um, the lawmaker says. Um, as part of this resignation letter, in your impatience to become prime minister, you put your own personal ambition above the, the stability of the country and our economy, said Doris, a to Reuters. Bewildered, we look in vain for a grand political vision but uh, for the people of this great country to hold on to. That would make all of this disruption and subsequent inertia worthwhile. But we find absolutely nothing. Bear in mind, that Doris, they say it's a it's a is a it's a close affiliate to um the last prime well not the last prime minister but Boris Johnson, mm -hmm. right? So <laughs> one wonders if this was penned by him. Well, it's yeah, that's I say it's going to be it's interesting. To, it's we'll have to figure out whether it's an isolated thing, whether the persons who are um, connected with Boris Johnson are just trying to make some sort of a play to get mm -hmm. back control of the party. So we'll have to see how it plays out, whether the sentiments of that individual is the sentiments of the majority of people in the country mm -hmm. or whether it's just internal party politics and somebody decide to let the cat out of the bag, so to speak. So we see, we see where it goes. <laughs> correct, correct. Some some of it, in a sense, is, is just a little bit just a little bit too personal. Some, yes. some of it. <laughs> the, the, the attacks, right? The attacks, correct. right? It, it, it's... There's very limited on um, how exactly it has affected the country, his his leadership style. Um, she says some very broad state. There's some very broad statements that she made, but uh, in terms of the um, actual uh, negative effects his leadership style has had on the economy, um, I think that's probably missing from from based on what it is that you would have quoted. So, I, I we, we we wait and see. We'll keep looking and keep following that story to see what comes out of it. Excellent, excellent. Have a great day. Folks are folks are heading off in different directions at, at, at our end. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, Tabby, but we, we indeed we have to um to see what, what happens. And this is another one of those things that we're following. China is no longer requiring uh, persons coming into China uh, to have a COVID a COVID test. You know, they had a they had a recent surge again and high and had to tighten up a little bit. So we're following that. Well, you know, we never we had a set of rules and regulations. In the 592, but nothing really up. It was different strokes for different folks. Put it like this. As, as is usual in our parts, we, we keep um, everything we see now on the international front. We are uh, checking to see how it how it fares out at home. But uh, it's interesting that um, China has decided to remove this uh, requirement, which should be an indication that the, the uh, if, if it is that we give ourselves that amount of liberty, it may be an indication of how things are going on their end because there was a, a lot of um, rustlings not too long ago about whether or not the COVID-19 is starting back or whether it's going to spread again in a different form. So that the fact that China is going this route may suggest to the rest of us that things have eased down on their, in, in their neck of the woods, so to speak. And so um, we maybe have to look out for the next pandemic. <laughs> so true, true. Right and there. you know, that is what they've been advising us Tabi, um, now that you've mentioned that, uh, the World Health Organization, um, you have PAHO also, the Pan American Health Organization, they've already, they, they have, they've been advising us for the longest while. We have to start preparing for the next pandemic. Are we? That's a good question. Because they said, you know, they're going to become more and more frequent. So we have I to start preparing for the next that's one. That's a question you have to ask our Minister of mm -hmm. Health. Yeah, yeah, that would be a good question indeed. That would be a good question. That being said, folks, and moving on, 
coming back to some of what we're tracking in the region, and this is closer to where we are. This I think is is uh, is Trinidad in particular. Uh, the, there is a particular issue in Trinidad concerning a teacher since 2016 that has been battling a misconduct allegation before the Teaching Service Commission there in Trinidad. And you know, we and our commissions and the service commissions, you know, a lot of them were only recently, um, what is the word? Um, uh, Tabby, help me. Recently constituted. That's the term I'm looking oh, for. Oh, the COI? Lots of our service commissions were oh, oh, only yes, 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 recently yes. constituted. Um, <laughs> But the public the, service commission was recently, and correct, I think they, they, they did something with the judicial service commission. You pick any one of them recently yeah. constituted. Yeah. Um, things have things function a bit differently in, in Trinidad. They actually believe in systems, which is one of the shortcomings that we have at, at, at our end. But some of what the judge said in ordering the teaching service commission to give information about this allegation and accusation to the teacher in question, um is very very insightful because what it says to us is that you can't just make allegations against people you often see that right uh, to form the basis of an investigation they did it with the police service commission when they said oh some people said xyz um we recently heard it too with Irfan concerning uh, the gtu that he wasn't going to be consulting necessarily head head on with the gtu he was going to the teachers directly because some of them have complained, but you never know who or what was the complaint. This was a similar case in Trinidad and Tobago, right? But Judge um, Justice Robin Mohammed recently instructed the Teaching Service Commission that they have 28 days to diligently search and furnish the teacher with the information requested in a Freedom of Information request made in, in, in 2019. Mind you, this has been going on since 2016, right? The judge says this, if the respondent is granted unrestricted authority to a certain non-disclosure, this is the union saying that we don't have to disclose if the respondent is granted unrestricted authority to a certain non-disclosure, the public interest in obtaining access to similar reports or statements of allegations essential for promoting transparency and ensuring the accountability of governmental and public authority pu public authorities rather is susceptible to erosion and neglect basically saying this whole thing about um non-disclosure we ain't standing for it in the modern era interesting he says um that uh, sorry rather the teacher in the request for the information who made the allegation and the um, and how the investigation was going, um, the teacher wanted the name of the person who made the report against him in 2016, and other information relating to the investigation of the allegation of misconduct. And mind you, this this was the heartbreaking part. The disciplinary proceedings against the teacher are still ongoing from 2016 to now. Yeah, that's that that is um. I was reading it as well, and it's a it's a lot to take in. Yeah, because if there's an allegation made in 2016, by now <clears throat> the service commission should be able to rule on the matter. Um, that's one. What the 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 teacher who the allegations were made against should have had enough information to be able to respond to any of the allegations, um, and and so so that they could move forward. He can move forward with his life, whether or not he's found guilty or not. But that from 2016 to now, they have not been able to end or finish their, 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 their whatever investigations and also furnish him with the necessary information so he can um, defend himself. Everybody has a right to be heard and everybody has a right to defend their good name in any circumstance. Yeah. And the fact yeah. that he has to go through this, um, this long time of not being able to defend any allegations that were made against him, he doesn't even know who made the allegations. I can understand, okay, it's a primary school child and so you may be a bit careful in terms of um, deciding whether or not you want to release any information. But uh, at this level, at this particular point, some information must be released so that he can properly um, deal with whatever allegations are made against him. And I, I think I think it's fitting, and I agree completely with the judge's assessment on the matter. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, two more important things were, were said here um, in keeping with this matter that's ongoing, as we said. Uh, it was argued that the false allegation of misconduct would tarnish the teacher's reputation and impede his future career advancement opportunities. The Teaching Service Commission had initially claimed that information was exempt from disclosure under the, uh, under the requisite act uh, as it could be uh, classed as an opinion, advice, or recommendation to the commission. Now, you'd want to, as they said, you tarnish somebody's reputation over um, uh, an opinion, uh, advice given. This is Trust Service Commission, right? But here what the judge said, because apparently they can't find some of the files in the matter, if there were any files at all. In, in the first place, exactly. <laughs> right? It says, um, in order to carry out such um, to carry out such disciplinary proceedings, it is only reasonable to conclude that the respondent bears the duty, this is the Teaching Service Commission, bears the duty to maintain records and to dispose of them only once disciplinary proceedings are concluded. Exactly. Any alternative course of action would contradict and render devoid of meaning any decision reached by the commission rendering it irrational, unfounded, arbitrary, and undoubtedly unlawful. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and as you speak, sure, it, it brings us again back to Guyana, yeah. where persons are um, charged or, or, you know, or arrested for some crime. And then when they go in front, in front of the judge, they hear they can't find the jacket, they can't find the file, they can't find the case. Please let us come back next week, next month. And, and, and most of those times, those persons who have been arrested are languishing in jail, sometimes for years, waiting on the jacket to, um, to be found or the file to be found so that they can actually get their day in court. So, um, right. this, you know, so it's, it's this, the system has to work in a better way for all. Uh, it, 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 I understand wanting to arrest someone if you believe they have committed something, but they ha it has to be due process. And um, at the level of the Teaching Service Commission, the judge is absolutely correct. If it is that they are investigating something, they cannot um, decide that the files are no longer necessary and get rid of the files and they have not completed the investigation. And uh, the, the individual who has been involved in it doesn't have a sense of what exactly were the allegations, who exactly are, um, are opposing yeah. these allegations to him and have a, a right to defend himself in, co in court or before the commission. Um, so I'm hoping that, the, well, the judge gave them a timeline. And so let's see what happens um, if they would be able to meet that particular timeline so that they can get on with, um, and, and, and the individual, the, the, the teacher can well, get on with his life. Well, Tabby, they've already, in a kind of a way, uh, let us know what's happening there because um, they basically said that they, they cannot find the documents. Mm. So then so, where does that leave? Where does so that the doctor, leave the sorry, the judge has basically given them some time to locate the documents, but they basically said, we cannot find these documents. And I, I, I'm i hazarding, I'm hazarding a guess here. There were no documents to, to In the first them. place. Somebody wanted to get at this teacher, made his complaint, and they set off on this frolic of the road, not yes. understanding the law fully. Well, if no documents are found, then the only thing the judge would have to do is be able to um, say that all of the allegations are null and void, and he goes back yeah. to teaching. Yeah. You know, Tabby, as, as we on that, allow me to say, you know, I saw some I saw some things um, uh, floating wrong recently about me on social media, um, in the what you call on on the dark web of social media, and I smiled when when I saw it because it's all foolishness, it's all baseless, um, and has no basis in reality or in fact about me soliciting some some on the age boy. Now, one, I've never been interested in anybody on the age. And while same sex and that kind of stuff, those kind of relationships might appeal for some people, it has never had any appeal to me personally. More power to, more power to you if, if, if that's your cup of tea. Um, but I saw Nigel Damla post this, um, this blatant lie and uh, I would say liable and, and, and scandalous information on his page over, over the weekend. Of course, he's very careful to scratch out um, part of my name and so on to give people just enough, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I want to state publicly that I have asked my lawyer to have a look at that. Yeah. Right. He ain't in enough trouble 
apparently I was the minister with the 16 year old and the rape allegations and all of that. So he's trying to bring me down now to his level. He's in enough trouble. So I just yeah, want to I think, I th here. yeah, I think, um, the decision was to try to tarnish as much as possible, as many persons as possible, yeah. even if there is no, That's um, true. there's That's no truth to it. To say, so, okay, yeah. we're not angels. But they're not angels. But, but they're not angels. No too. So that is it. So all of us are the same. So that is that is the I think that was the decision that was made. Let's try to tarnish as many of those on the opposite side as possible because we know what we do. <laughs> and they seem not to be able yeah. to find anything on the other side. And so now they have to come up with lies. Um yeah. he's so on that, a collision course, possible. and I would I would advise him to to pause, take stock of where he is in his life, personally and professionally. Right? And then proceed. Okay. Because he can make a lot of mistakes and like he's happy with very there. Yeah, so I, let him I, if I don't he think, wants I don't know more to Nigel and publicity, helpful. we can give him that. I don't think Nigel talking to Nigel Damal is helpful. I, I don't see him. Yeah. I don't yeah. I don't know. I think yeah. he needs psychological help. Yeah. Well, I am with you there. That being said, folks, let's get back to some of what we're covering this morning. So we're talking about Trinidad and the Service Commission, the Teaching Service Commission, and that teacher. And we're in the 592. And Tabby, in unhappy un, un news, let me tell you guys how much we raised last uh, last week. I wanted to get the graphics and so on and so on, but um, some of us are, are late risers, so the graphic artists. <laughs> <laughs> but folks, I, I didn't even tell you all how much we were aiming for um, with the drone, but I did say I wanted us to have a very professional drone because I, I I don't believe in buying things five and six times, you know? If something's going to be of good value and good quality and it costs little, go down that road, you know? So we, we're aiming, I can tell you guys now, um, that we're aiming to buy the DJI, um, the DJI Maverick Pro 3, I think it is, and the cost of it, Tabby, <laughs> the cost of it was 20, it's close to 2200 US dollars. Okay. And we managed to raise twenty three hundred US dollars in two days last week. Woo! Yep, 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 yep. And <laughs> folks, who, who, folks, who, now that we we're going to be able to procure the drone of itself, now that we're going to be able to to do that by itself, um, any extra money people uh, send to us, we're going to buy like an extra battery, might buy a nice case. Um, because you know, for something like that, and you're going to need a software to work with it, and so so. Correct, correct. So any additional funds people send us will go to offset costs of those those minor things, an extra battery, a nice carrying case, um, so that we don't drop it about the place and so. <laughs> so I was so happy that over the weekend when we were tallying up. Oh, sorry there. I was so happy over the weekend when we were tallying up how we were doing, and we saw that we were. Uh, over the oh, over the um, the tape, we would pass the tape on the actual cost. So I really want to say thanks to everybody. Yes, That's thank what you, I really want to. You. Know. I want to say thanks to everybody who pitched in to help us. You know, some more than others, but all 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 the contributions we got. We really want to say thanks. We raised twenty three hundred US dollars, yeah, which, which is excellent. over which is over uh, four hundred thousand Ghana dollars, really and truly. Right, yes, but we yes, wanted to thank you. You got to thank you. Have to thank your fans, Cheryl. You have to yeah, thank we wanted fans. to do. We wanted to do a professional, uh, a professional quality sturdy drone, um, and so thanks to you guys out there <laughs> for helping Excellent. us to helping us to do this. And I see lots of the folks are saying congratulations. Yeah, I see somebody saying Sue and Cheryl Donna Daly. I've asked. I'm not thinking about this. I send information to my lawyer, and I said, look at it. And let me know if we have a case because he was smart to rub out some of the rub out the name, but just enough. But just enough. Yeah. You understand? Know, and I'm fed up of it at this point, and I am not going to allow damn lad to tarnish me and bring me down to his level. Yeah. That I will not. You know, ordinary people in the in the course of the politics, you know, the ordinary man in the street, I can give allowances. Part of being in public, like Tabby, you know this. You have to allow criticisms. Yeah. But where you see blatant falsehood and people talking, but uh, underage children and all kind of foolishness yeah. that I'm not going to be involved with. Yeah, and I agree with you. That 100%. I'm not going to be involved with. Right. So I'm going to. Ha they're having a look at that, and they're going to let me know how to proceed on that. And I'm going to allow it from him in particular. Yeah. 
You understand? He has no because right even to cast out someone to speak on any matter. Yeah. 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 But he is trying to get back in the good graces of the public. So yeah. he can play the hatchet man for the PPP. But miss us on this side. Miss us on this side with that nonsense. So thanks to all of the folks. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thanks to all of the folks. I really yeah. want to say thanks because we, we challenged you guys. And you, you arose to the challenges. And this is what they're trying to stop, you know, Tabby. Valid and credible information Valid. getting to the people. That so is what they want. Yeah. They so are upset, to go training. They're upset that consistently people tune into our broadcast. Yeah. People watch our program. Nobody's watching them. He posts something on his page. Five, five likes and two shares. And he was a whole minister. Nobody watching N NCN. You see, two, three hundred people watching Jack Blue press conference. Thousands watch us every single day. Yeah. That is what they're vexed with because why? We're supposed to be in opposition. We, we, we're supposed to be looking bad. We're supposed to be looking pulled pull down. We shouldn't be going anyway. We shouldn't have good, strong families. The fact that you're married, the fact that your family mm -hmm. moving on, you got kids and so on, and you're living a wholesome, full life, it bothers them. Yeah. And you're bringing a plate by them to ask for anything. It bothers them. <laughs> I, 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 no, I understand. I agree with you. I agree with you. And that is why when we can, especially in this particular instance, I'm, I'm glad that you decided to go to your lawyers on the matter because they're going to try as much as possible to tarnish the names of the, as many people as they yeah. can um, to, to try and, and, and diminish, um, the, the, you know, the stature of persons on our sides because they really have nothing to go on. But you know, lies and, and spew pop propaganda. Yeah, and they have nothing uh, to do with the time. So it's easy for them. To so do this Photoshop uh, fake news nonsense, putting pictures here and there, contrived conversation. And I was telling somebody, look at it, the same photograph, the, the trying the same stupidness with Ganesh. The same yeah. photograph from the Ganesh thing is the same the photograph. The same photograph they use again. Same photograph. <laughs> but it also goes to their mindset that that is what they think they need to be back doing. Back of nasty people. Imagine you're in government. You, uh, you are in government. You have a whole country to run. And your thinking is to sit down in a back room and trying to find ways to tarnish the opposition in sexual in sexual i was like i don't understand like why is it that that is where your mind is at this particular point in time you don't have enough work because it is where he was right we didn't carry that 16 year old by his house no but it's not him it's a representation of the party that he's right. a part of yeah yeah that's the character and the quality of people on that side that is the character and the quality of the people but we're going to continue fighting on this side. And I'm happy that the folks have carried us. Yes. November coming is three years since we're on the air doing this. And it's the people who have carried us all this time. And I'm so grateful. And last week, we challenged them to help uh, the programs in, 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 in this way. And you guys have responded. And we raised, we raised over $400,000 in two days. Because we didn't, we I think we started on Wednesday, and by Friday we'd already got to the point we needed. We raised four hundred thousand dollars in two days, and this is this is the strength of who we are as a people. When we can yes. come together, you know, outside of the politics, we got yes. something that is drawing us together, and we can uh, we can achieve so much, you know, we can achieve so much. But that being said, we are in the fight. <laughs> we are we are in the five nine two. I I don't want I don't want any cross to overshadow us. This morning at all. <laughs> we are in the 592. And oh my. Oh my. Paul and Tabby. <laughs> a lot going on there, sure. <laughs> Paul and Tabby. Uh, Jamson held its pageant over the weekend. And um, and we have... Uh, it, Jamson has a queen. This is uh, Trevlin Harry. is a new uh, Miss Jamson. Listen, as long as our young people aren't in destructive activities... You know, to each his own. I know everybody's not for pageant and pageantry and all of that. Um, but if it's not destructive activities, and there's lots out there to lure our young people, um, and, and lots of persons, you know, people making allegations, luring our young people to houses 16 years and under, right? And violating them. If our young people want to be involved in wholesome activities, we say go right here. And so we say congrats to but Trevor Sharon, Harry. I I was actually listening to her. Um, she was—I uh, can't remember who she was—who was—who was interviewing her. But she's actually a nurse, mm. 
Mm -hmm. And she, uh, it was a pleasure actually listening to her speak because she really, she loves what she does. Um, she finds pleasure in being a nurse. She, she, it seems that, that was, it, when she spoke, you could feel that she really enjoys being a nurse. And that was just such a pleasure to hear. Um, so yes, congratulations to her um, uh, on, 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 on um, winning this particular pageant, but there's more to her than the swimsuit. I just wanted you to hear that she was, right. she, 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 her, her mind, it was just really sat and you listen to her, and you know, there's a wholesome person there. It's not just um, the pageant, nothing against pageants, um, but congratulations to her nonetheless, and all the best to her in her future endeavors. Excellent. I'm, I'm from a family of professional nurses, so I'm, I'm so overjoyed to hear that aspect uh, yes. too, and we want to yes. wish her well. We yes. want to wish her well. Right. Yeah. And in, in that same vein, we found a guy needs flying for American Airlines. Um, and he, too, you know, has a lot going for him. I mean, a pi be, becoming a pilot is a feat all of its own. And he is more than a pilot, too. This is Ethan Anthony Wilson. He's 39. And he hails from Mahaika on the East Coast. Um, and he's just become the youngest black pilot at United Airlines, not American, United Airlines. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say he's going to pick up that Airlines. United Airlines. And has expressed his commitment to aiding his homeland um, any chance that he, that he gets. Uh, he says that out of 17,000 pilots with, with that airline, uh, there's about seven Guyanese pilots that work for the airline. And he's the youngest captain and the youngest black captain at United Airlines, he said. Um, he was talking at the time to uh, the Chronicle. Chronicle. Um, he says that this pride is the driving force behind his decision, here it is now, to open a West Indian supermarket in Brooklyn, New York, mm. that offers a wide range of products from Bangamere, or as some folks who have migrated along would say, Bang Bangamere, from Bangor Mary to mentholated spirits can be found in the supermarket mm. there. It's West Indian supermarket in Brooklyn. And he has plans to even expand to businesses in Guyana. Yep. Excellent. Ethan Wilson. Uh, yeah, um, you know, Sherrod, I this this story, I've of recent I've seen a lot of stories of our Guyanese doing so well overseas, um, in different areas, in science, in health. Uh, in in the professional sphere, and it's it's so pleasing to see because you know it's sometimes you get caught up by what is happening here at home, and persons have chose to leave, and sometimes you wonder, you know, with all the brain drain, mm -hmm. whether or not we will reach our best capacity here. But it's so good to see our Guyanese brothers and sisters going abroad and doing so well. Well, um, Tabby, you so know, once you left years. this country. You just kind of pick up, you right? Yes, you just take off, right? <laughs> a lot of people telling me I look more handsome since since I left. Is it? <laughs> it's the lighting. It's the lighting. <laughs> it's the lighting. <laughs> but we want to say congrats to congratulations. Congrats definitely. to Ethan Wilson. This is Ethan with an O E T H O N, or is Chronicles spelled wrong? <laughs> congrats to Ethan Wilson, and we continue to look forward um, to uh, his his future endeavors. Um, and we have some good role models. We got some good black role models. You know, we, we got some good role role models that people, our children can look up to and say, I want to be like Ethan, you know? Yes, yes, yes. It, it was interesting in the part of the article, he was saying that he was uh, he was playing on the 19 cricket in the US. And um, he made a decision. He had to ha ask himself some serious questions because, mm -hmm. you know, cricket isn't that big a sport in the United States? And so yeah. he made a shift after recognizing yeah. that. And so he Sometimes went you have to, to ask tough pilot. questions. Sometimes, you know. Yes, you have to ask yourself some tough questions as to where you want yeah. to be yeah. and what you need to do and to sacrifice to get there. Yeah. I'm so pretty tall. I'm about know. I'm about six, six, two, two. Um when when I left home, I'm probably about six four four now. <laughs> So you're asking yourself some tough questions. Uh, no, no, but pe people have always <laughs> said when I was growing up, you know, I, I was asked if you play basketball because you talk. Mm. But I had to ask myself some tough questions, you know. <laughs> when you look around, you don't see too many in international Guyanese basketball player, you know. Oh yeah, that is true. And I knew with my two two knock knees to think I wouldn't go. 
<laughs> you won't go you won't want to go too far. <laughs> <laughs> Tough questions, you know. Tough questions. But congrats, least, Ethan Wilson. At least you are true to yourself. That is yeah, good. Yeah. True to the inward parts, Tabby. I know you understand that. That's really the, the, the good book requires yes. of us truth on the inward part. Um, coming to other matters at home, uh, this is the this is the Mazaruni District Council urging swift resolution on the Chinese landing dispute. There's been a fight in our indigenous brothers and sisters for the minerals and the other resources beneath their feet, where they live in. Fighting them to come and mine out the gold and the diamond and whatever else is found there, manganese. The Upper Masuni District Council said they met recently, Tabby, and others. They met and they, they met at their, um, let me get this right, at one of their regional conferences recently, or regional meeting. And they said, we will speak out on this matter at the upcoming National Two Shows Conference because it resonates with us. That's what they're saying here. It resonates with us, right? They said they met August 24th to 25th at Tamarang Village in Region 7 at an extraordinary meeting. And they decided to come back. The folks there at Chinese Landing, Tassawini at Chinese Landing. This is a, I think this is a Carib, um, a Carib um, village. Yes. We can back them, right? In a statement, the Upper Mazuni District Council said that their decision to stand in solidarity with uh, Chinese Landing was made. They said the situation of the Car people at Chinese Landing resonates with us as an indigenous people. Um, the issues the Chinese landing uh, folks face uh, are common among indigenous communities in Guyana. And we are so grateful to the brave villagers at Chinese landing for bringing attention to these issues. Yeah, people in England like that. Yes, and, and, and you see, I think that is the statement was fitting. I think it's good to see that they <clears throat> were able to come together. I think what was also said in the article was that they were going to ensure they addressed the National Tashaus Council, which is right. coming up soon. Um, and I, the, the issue of our indigenous people, I think it's something that we don't often um, spend a lot of time speaking about because it's, of course, not in central Georgetown. And so sometimes it's not usually at the forefront of of our minds as to what is happening in a lot of those communities. And they they have lands in some areas that, you know, you can can be mined, but <clears throat> I think we have to be very clear on how it is we go about doing it. Yep, yep, I agree totally. And as the district council, the upper as well, the district council said, it is not this issue here of the infringement on mining lands at Chinese landing is not um, idiosyncratic to Chinese landing. We have covered here, those of you who've been our listeners and viewers of our program, what's happening there at, um, at Marudi Mountain, What's happening also at Isenaru? Same thing. All the communities, indigenous communities, they are being almost bullied, coerced, you know, to give up their rights to their land so that others can come, giving them pretense of anything at all. And this government, they didn't see no problem with that. They didn't see no problem with that. But you see, Isenaru says, we're going to stand with them. Right? Isenru says we're going to stand with them. And that's important. As soon as we have Tappy back, we're going to pull her in. Isenru says we're going to stand with them. And I'm happy. Sometimes it's only one of us stand up, you know. But that can inspire others. Right? That can inspire others. So don't get um, too concerned when it's only you standing up. Right? Don't get too concerned when it's only Pamela Dover or Naomi Drucker. Others can be inspired by that as well. Others can be inspired. Yep. Sorry. I sorry about that, Sherrod. Sorry. Cool. But yes, I, I agree with you that um I think coming together is necessary and uh standing up and um so ha being in solidarity with each other, I think is necessary because I think what the government I, and, and a lot of these businessmen thrive on is um dealing with persons in isolation. And feeling as if they can deal with one community and they can get away with it then they can go to another community and do the same thing but if persons come together 
in all of these hinterland areas where mining is going on illegally and they're being taken advantage of, if they can come together and stand up, with, they will get the necessary assistance nationally and internationally to fight off all of these uh, unwanted um, attacks on them uh, from, from the business community and also from, from, from the government. Because if the government wants so, they can come in and deal with the situation as well. Correct, correct, correct. Well, you know, we're dealing with this and things only get progressively worse on the show. Those of you who are joining us, share the line for us, smash that emoji button as well and partner with us. It helps our program to keep uh, going, going forward. Um, it only gets progressively worse because we had a very, very bloody uh, weekend, yeah. Tabitha. A very, very bloody weekend. Yes, I, 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 oh, I saw some of the images. Yeah. Yeah. And when I when I read the ages, it's like an average age of nineteen. Correct. These eight Correct. young souls that have just gone, and um, I don't know. It's it's sad. It's it's really, I don't know what is happening in our country. I really don't. But our young people are dying, and the, these things on the roads. I'm not sure where we go from here, and uh, other than keep saying yeah. to our people it does not help to speed it's not why are we rushing where are we going do not drink and drive um it's better to arrive safe um than not to arrive at all through speeding and so i would just like to urge us if you know of a young person that has just recently gained their license or even somebody who's a bit older and you know they tend to um to speed speak to them have conversations with them because we want our, our 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 people to live long and fruitful lives and not to die in this sort of way and now the families have to mourn 18 uh eight, eight young souls um it's it's it's, right. it's just heartrending it's heart said, um uh, uh, some of the reports said six teenagers lost their lives in a spate of four hours apart yeah. um, eight persons over the weekend and they're telling us that these were accidents that occurred um, between Unity Public Road on the East Coast, um, number 11 Public Road, East Babis, Resource Public Road, Canal Number 2 on the yeah. West Bank of Demerara. Eight teenagers, sorry, yeah. 16, and the eight persons on the whole lost yeah. their lives in a horrific fashion over the weekend. And again, Tabby, those persons who tune into our program on a regular basis. No, we always talk about the carnage on our roads and our waterways. Because now we see like some people catching that, you know. The people who should be doing the stats and seeing the trend and um, making interventions. They're so silent. I'm, 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 I'm appalled by it because how, how, what, what needs to happen for them to realize that something is going wrong and they need to find some way of dealing and responding to what is happening because if it is that every it's every day Sharon every day there are accidents on the road on the roadways um, most of them fatal accidents and I'm, I'm trying to understand what the Guyana police force what the Minister of Home Affairs has planned to deal with the matter because something has to be done if it it means um, going in and speaking to persons if it means having campaigns um, in different areas, so people understand that this thing is not, you know, they, they need to find ways to deal with the matter, and they're not. Yeah. And, and what is going to continue to happen is accidents are going to continue because nobody is doing what is necessary to try to bring, um, to raise the awareness of the population. Um, some may say, well, just the fact that they have accidents and it's all over social, social media, it's raising the awareness, but apparently it isn't. Because first of all, our young people generally feel that they will live forever and so they go into the cars with that mentality they go they go out with that mentality and unless they're told and they're spoken to about you know but the the dangers of driving under the influence i'm not saying any of them were under the influence in this particular case mm -hmm. and and the dangers of speeding then this will continue to happen yeah yeah this is what we have to grapple with um and again the authorities i see people offering several bits of advice in terms of the commentary on the on the program um but we have to do more policy wise there's the yeah. road safety council and all of that but i don't think there is good leadership to kind of channel all of this in the right direction um where it needs to go but 
individually, we can play our roles too, Tabby. As you mentioned there, you're practicing the five C's. You know, you have a designated driver. You choose that you don't want to um to, to drive, drink and drive, and all of that. You know, you have to make that decision. But you know, we got a lot of bad, bad, bad men for driving. I say bad man. I could hold hold my liquor. I've been driving for twenty years. I can't. I never get in accidents. I can't get in accident, right? And 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 we also have to drive defensively because if you drive on a road now, as you said, there are a lot of people who are on the roads and they're just very careless and they feel that they are superheroes or something the way they 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 drive and maneuver on the roads. And so, for those of us who are um, saying we have to um, ensure that we are driving defensively and taking stock of the fact that the person next to us may do something that it really may not be um, necessarily wise. And so when you're driving, you stay uh, um, as far as possible from other cars. And, you know, you do as much as you can to keep safe. Uh, and, and and so, that, you know, as you said, quite rightfully, Asherah, a lot needs to be done policy-wise. Um, they, they need to look at the statistics. They need to look at where these accidents are happening. They need to figure out uh, what are the main causes of these accidents and put some systems in place to reduce what is happening on our roadways. Correct, you know, which takes me back to what we started out talking about um, the resignation there in the UK with the, with, with the lawmaker and so not. You know, nothing's been done in the parliament. The things that should concern us in concerning us, you know, That's and it. when you have the the uh, parliamentary opposition trying to make meaningful intervention, like I heard the AG said, yes, yeah, y'all come here with this nonsense and I have a, and I have a child for Goma and look at I said, wow. <laughs> Oh, you heard that? <laughs> it, it's 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 almost as if there, it's almost as if um he's not aware of why it is that we have a parliament in the first place, and it's for those same reasons because we go there to debate issues, and it is hope that we can come to some form of consensus on matters of national importance, and that is why we are at the national. That is why we go to the national assembly. That is why motions are filed. The questions are asked. And if the Attorney General feels that he has better things to do than sit in the National Assembly and debate issues of national importance, then maybe he shouldn't be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make room for other folks because I think um, we deserve that much as a people. You know, and nobody's knocking um, anybody who has kids at, at all. Far from it. We got kids and we got to exactly. manage it. We got to manage it, right? And I've never heard anybody on our side say, you know, I got my children home, so... Um, Y'all hurry up, man. You know, don't bring this nonsense in. God, we talking long, long, long. I'm a cheering home. Thought about that long and hard, Chappy. I thought about it long and hard. You know, and well, you know, the, the attorney general is new at it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. I could have said many things that day. Many things that day, you know. So you have to give him that. He's, I shake, he's, he's, I shake he's, a, new, he's a newly minted father. In that so moment, he... I realized why Roisin is beating up in the court every day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's a newly minted father, so you have to give him some leeway, yeah. dear man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's enjoying it. Yeah. Our thoughts and prayers go to all of the families yeah. and lost loved ones over the weekend, the communities yeah. they hail from. Our thoughts and prayers to friends of these uh, persons who lost their lives from very, very young people. In one case, I think um, they were a couple. Um, young people, you know, in relationships probably went out for a night, hanging out somewhere, and then. I heard um, the four that died, the four, on, uh, I think on, this is on the West, on the West Bank, um, hit a truck, a truck that was parked there, yes. then hit a concrete post or a con some kind of an, uh, another structure. Horrific, horrific. Our thoughts and prayers uh, go out to their families. Definitely, and definitely thoughts and prayers with, to the family and friends. It's, it's uh, dealing with death is never easy. And then when you have to, to bury your child, it's a different level, you know, and it's 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 really sad it's really sad yeah 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 um and talking about issues of national interest tabitha um we've been touching on this more and more on our on our broadcast the cost of living in guyana Sabic news does a weekly look at the cost of living they interview several persons to get their take on where the cost of living is and i like this i like this i'm happy that Sabic news is pursuing this and because it's it's not Tabitha's party, it's not 
the AFC is not up. No, it's not parliamentary opposition. Right? This is the uh, independent newspaper, middle of the road newspaper, going after the truth wherever it leads. That's one thing I learned when I was sitting down at UG, learning about journalism. And I graduate. I didn't drop out. Graduated. One thing you learn, you must pursue the truth wherever it leads. The cost of living. This is part 38. It means 38 weeks. Sabah have been asking people, tell us about how you faring with the cost of living. Folks, and for 38 weeks, people telling Sabah the same thing all the time. I want to give you their responses because I want you all to know we're making up things. Right? We're making up stories. Glenford, Kyle Bino, Peggy Elias, um, Abby D'Souza, Lorraine Ali Cock. We're making up stories. Right? We're making up stories. Look what folks have been saying to Sabak News. I just want to quote a couple of the um, interventions made by these folks talking with Sabak News. Right? A couple of them. I can we can we can talk with everybody. A couple of them, because there were 10 responses, and that 10 could give us 10 days. Right? Those 10 responses could give us 10 days of content. But take this man called um, Chavindra Harchan. Harchan. Chavindra. He's 33 years old. He's a farmer. He said, that as, as a single parent, I would have to support my two children. And the cost of living is affecting me and family since the salary is low. I find that before, I find that before, right? Before them boys. I would have gotten more items for my money than now. Here's the story now. I do plant crops to make ends meet, but still, the money's not enough to support my family. Simple items like Coca-Cola, expensive. A one liter is now 320. Before it was 300. Even the cost of cooking oil gone up. A gallon bottle was 3,000. A gallon bottle... It's 3,000 3, and something now. Before it was 2,000. Yeah. This is the common man talking, Tabby. Right? We really need help with the cost of living, Harachan says. Right? Another thing is when the government is, dis is, dis is distributing items to farmers to aid in agriculture, the government of Guyana should make sure all farmers receive items, whether it helps with livestock, crops, um, or tools, not just to distribute items to certain farmers. Since we have farmers who are who, who are happy for the help, not just friends, family, and favorites. Harry Chan is saying here, really and truly, Tabitha. I and I think the the views of Harry Chan is the views of many of Guyanese across the country. I think we all are feeling that same pain um, of going into the market or going into the Supermarket, wherever it is, you choose to shop, and every day you go, you, the price prices are, um, have raised on, on 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 essential items, not just the seemingly luxury items that you don't necessarily have to to buy, but those items that you need um, to, to 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 be able to feed your families um, have gone up, and they're continuing to go up, and 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 it's. It's, I, it, it reminds me of the, the, the question that um, uh, my colleague MP uh, Ferguson asked the, the Minister of Finance, Will, um, recently about the $5 billion that have been budgeted to deal with these particular issues. And at this particular month, we're in, we're in the end of August, they have not decided how it is that they were going to utilize the $5 billion to relieve Guyanese of the issues as it relates to cost of living. So a lot of Guyanese find themselves trying to, 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 trying to balance um, the pittance they get as a salary as opposed to the increases that are uh, there in a lot of what it is that they need in order to survive. And then, of course, school is about to open and families have to figure out how it is they're going to prepare their children to go back to school. They need school uniform. They need to get their textbooks. They need to prepare, you know, to, to have to ensure that once the ch child gets to the first day of school, they have everything they need to have a productive um, term at school. And 
uh, to balance food, to balance um, their education. Uh, you know, it's going to be really rough the, at the end of this month, especially since the government decided, I think all of us believe it's because of local government elections, that they are going to give them the school, school, um, the school things early. And persons had needs then. And so now with, with school now opening, whether or not all of that money was saved for now is, an, is a question that has to be asked. So it's I, I agree 100% with everything um, uh, Harachan said. The, 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 the schools catch grant finish and people are asking for more. Well, share the live. This is valid and credible information. Listen to what um this woman at the bottom of our graphic said because her response was interesting this is uh pearly peter pearly peter so have to listen to pearly's flight right right now pearly says this is a woman at the bottom of the graphic the bigger of the photographs right now my son and i are living together and he runs the shop for me while I hustle to sell food at the side. So poorly got a shop. Poorly doubling up to try to combat to combat the high cost <clears throat> of living in this country on the PPP. She says, I selling food now on the side. Right? Tell me. Viewers, the items that I have to buy to keep my business going is expensive and sometimes I can't afford it. For instance, I'm now buying a thousand dollars for a big bundle of bora, and the quality is bad. Mm. Party says, before the same bundle of bora was four or five hundred dollars with good quality. Also, a pound of celery is spent on five hundred to three thousand dollars. Now, a couple of months back, a pound of celery was a thousand. Right? Here, a party says next, folks. Remember, Polly got a shop. Polly also doing a little food on the side to subsidize. Polly goes on to say here to establish news. I would like to benefit from the ten day mm. job program the government is offering to persons interested in a part time job to help with the cost of living. A quote in Polly, despite. Of me being 60 years old, I think the government should open the program to me as well because the cost of living is high on basic food items. For yes. this pro, uh, um, and this program, cost of living is high on basic food items, and this program could really help me with the high prices. Party got a shop, party selling food on the side, and party still want a third walk for make it in the area. To think we understand that and 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 what 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 is coming across there is that that she's not somebody who doesn't know how to how industrious. to work she she's industrious she body wants to work wants to work and she has she has had her shop and it based on on what she's saying the shop probably used to do very well before based on what was happening but now she had to go and now um cook food to also sell and even that can't work and so now she 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 needs something else to sustain yeah herself and her son and yeah. who's also working in the shop and it goes to show just how um hard things are in this country it is very difficult and 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 i'm, I'm hoping that the um with all the international basics expo and all of the, the lovely pictures they're taking that they realize that the majority of guyanese are not feeling um, party? The positives of the of, of of this oil economy that is being touted here and around the world and a lot of Guyanese are suffering and we need to put systems in place to reduce the cost of living or help people to uh, because it's only going to get worse it's not going to get better yeah it is but you know it's interesting it's better. because look at party this is the large of the image at the bottom yeah smiling there you know going forward party saga shop I selling food on the side, but I I won't mind a ten day work for making it in this country. Yeah. That's the average guy, and I see your boy Jack John press conferences talking about the economy in 1992. What have you done? You know, 
for 25 years in government. What have you done? This is 1992. This is uh, to, uh, uh, 2023. I'm probably telling you a new economy. How she's suffering. Yeah. What have you done? Paulie said, I will mind a 10 day job. It was like Harchan said it before he used things, and, used, and, to, and used things to add up. Harchan, as Harchan was saying, that before he was able to um, sustain himself on, on, based on whatever his income was, but now he can't. <clears throat> so something is going wrong in this oil economy. Something is definitely going wrong. And and the, 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 the the issue that I have, Sherrod, is that what we're hearing from these individuals, it's not isolated. It cuts across, um, it cuts across race, yep. it cuts across class, it cuts yep. across whichever region you're in. The majority of Guyanese are suffering right now. The majority of Guyanese are suffering and need uh, proper policies in place to help them during this particular time and it is not going to get better. So what is going to happen with the majority of our citizens while we're busy parading as if everything is lovely and we're in a new Dubai and we inf have lovely infrastructure that breaking down after six months? Yeah. As they said rightfully, people can't eat road. So what will happen with our Guyanese people if no policies are in place to ensure that they can wade through this particular um, cost of living that is growing and it's getting worse? We need That's to do something that we have. It. That's the challenge that we have, you know. That's the challenge that we have. And this was replicated in all these folks who spoke with Sabuk News. Things going up, things going up, things going up, right? Things going up. You hear it, uh, when we spoke with the first gentleman, he said it too. He got two, he got two jobs. He said a plan cash crop to, 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 to subsidize. You know, the pain enough, a plan to make cash crop to subsidize. But nothing I'm doing. Something got to give. Something got to give. We saw the uh, the um, sugar workers protesting last week. Something's got to give. Things are hard. We need more money. But Jack Johnny, looking back in the rearview mirror, right? In 1992, oh, when we took over in 1992, oh, in 1992, factor fiction, 2023. A 60-year-old woman said, I can take three jobs to make it, but I will it. Yeah. And that also means she may also be getting her pension. Yeah. And that too is not working out. Yep. So when some of us trying to travel down, probably traveling up, I say, I got to make ends meet, so I don't mind. Open back up. Open up this program to people my age. Yeah. I won't catch a walk. Wow. So when your family... Um, call and say, you know, um, Pamela, out front parts, you know, Howard, tell us what we see. I'll buy the things tight in this place, folks. Then <laughs> they're exaggerated, they're exaggerating. Take it from poorly, take it That's from poorly, rough, rough. right? Take it from poorly, right? You know, when people call me. Living out here in the diaspora, ask me for a smart piece. I'm saying it. All right, I will call you later, Sharon. <laughs> People call me living out here in the diaspora. I'm sending it. I can send it. <laughs> I will call you later. We'll have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, folks, it has been our privilege to be here with you this morning. Um, from the many places you guys join us from, hundreds of you. You know, close to 1,400 of you joined our broadcast. I want to thank all of you for being here this morning, for contributing to our drone project. We can do the unboxing right here. Yeah, I want you to see everything. <laughs> Transparency, accountability, good governance. <laughs> everything. I know you're all pastors, so be fine. <laughs> Just invite me to fly in the people's kitchen. Oh, Jesus. You look at what likes <laughs> I've been carried out saying, later, I'll see the two. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, all of you. I see we got Orin Don, Michelle, Edward Bruce, Margaret Nelson, Margaret Thanks for the thing, and all the others who send a little small piece of help to make this possible. Uh, Kelvin uh, Brower and Elderly Gilbert. Time to call some names. <laughs> <laughs> you know my site. 
I can't see Sharon. I want to go. Gwyneth and Sheila Boy Child. Man, y'all call some of them names y'all, y'all self too. <laughs> Robin, Gwyneth, Pamela, and all those folks joining us. It's been a privilege being here with this boy. Tammy, thank you so much for showing up. Thanks for, be, uh, thanks for having me. Um, good uh, morning and have a good day to all your followers and listeners and viewers this morning. Uh, it was good to be here. Tabby, you hold know? on, hold on. Just yeah, you what, go. Hold what? on, Tabby. Now, Naomi asked me when I go. Now, you think she was, I, I had... You think it's Naomi I was saying? <laughs> when you going home? <laughs> she miss you. No, no, we ain't going home. <laughs> Share your sweet on 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 the um the overseas. I think you're coming back. Oh yes, I'm getting in some rest in 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 between and still working too. We'll be back. That's good. That's good. That's right. Good. Um, Parliament is back in October. We're on recess right now. Yes. Hint, hint. <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> this, okay, I get you. I get you. <laughs> you have some time. <laughs> oh. Folks, right. have a great day and stay safe. Right, bye bye. Stay safe. Tabby, don't go anywhere. <laughs> the folks can go. Have a great day, guys.